Hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. And today I'm joined by Alex Nail, the mountain photographer who's been working with us for quite a number of years now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't really know Four, when it started. It was a five, soft, soft introduction. Yeah, so. I think it was, well, I've been yeah. here seven years, so it must be, yeah, it must be yeah, five. Five, five or six, yeah, it must yeah. be. You've just gone from strength to strength with your photography and also your your own business with the photography and things like that as well. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm trying. I'm not a rich man. I can do the, <laughs> the strength to strength fit a bit yeah. more with the business, but yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> well, obviously with Photospeed's help as well. We've um, yeah. supplied you with some lovely papers Absolutely. and things and the lovely platinum cotton, which we're, we'll talk about a little bit later. But we wanted to talk about Alex's amazing new book, The Great Wilderness, which is a collection of your photography or is it a well it's it's more... really a, a four-year project out in um one of scotland's most remote regions um which is known as the, the great mm. wilderness but it's the uh, right. fisher field and uh, letty U forest um a I forest mean... without trees <laughs> a deer forest but yeah it's a, a very remote area of, of northwest scotland and and somewhere that i've spent an enormous amount of time now i mean i sort of explain that in the book but i've mm. spent 50 nights uh, out there camping to produce the images oh, wow. in this book and uh, walked 420 miles, I think I worked wow. out. So it's quite quite a physical effort. Was it, um, was was it 50 nights miles. all in one go or was it? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, Because I was going to say, efficient. how did you get away yeah. with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, to a certain degree, you kind of have to pick your moments because it's, it's remote enough um, and with enough bad weather that you could end up just going out there pointlessly and having mm. a miserable time. So yeah, there's certainly a, a degree of picking the right moment to go, but yeah, nevertheless, a, a lot of time spent in bad weather and stormy nights in a <laughs> tent uh, struggling to sleep. Yes, I'd see uh, Joe Cornish has given the forward as well. Yeah, me, which, is, which is great. I mean, I, I actually got to hike with Joe and, and his son out there and then ran a mm. workshop out there with, with Joe. So, I mean, that's a, a milestone for me in many ways because I, I you know <laughs> I started good. photography looking up at Joe um, and so it's, it's great that he's written such a, a beautiful board. I love that it starts with these lovely maps mm -hmm. which I think you made didn't you or did yeah, you? Yeah um, that was that was a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so I, I used the OS um, data set actually which is which is free online um, to form the basis of the maps but there's a lot of my own textures I did all of the place names by hand it's all my own calligraphy um, yeah so that, that was a big part of the book for me because I, I I relate to the landscape in mm. terms of maps um, I think anybody who spends a lot of time in the mountains would to be yeah. honest um, so I think that gives a bit of context to these different chapters because the book's broken up regionally mm. into chapters to give the book a bit of structure. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the the maps are something that I'm quite proud of, actually. I spent many, many hours on them. And you actually got these in print form as well, haven't you? Yeah, so I, I did produce a larger map for, for people who pre-order, which unfortunately I've run out of now. Oh, but uh, shouldn't have mentioned Yeah, that, you shouldn't but... have mentioned it. <laughs> still, a, still well worth buying, even without the, the standalone map. The maps map. are all in the book, don't worry. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But um, no, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's, it's beautifully printed as well. But I should probably say the photography is amazing to start with. And as I always Thank say you. in videos, get your photography right and the printing is a lot, lot easier. And yeah, although well, still not easy. And um, the, the printing was actually done up in, in Nantwich um, at Johnson's Printers okay. up there. And they're, they're really fantastic uh, mm. book printers. It does cost more to print in the UK, but I think more of us photographers should be doing that because obviously you can achieve a very high quality as well. Which I always important. think you've got more control in the UK. Yeah, well. I mean, I was, I was on press to print this. Mm. Um, and yeah, being able to do that, I think is quite important. I think it makes a massive difference and yeah, so you're so. running off those tests. Look, I, I guess lots of people watching this video won't quite understand that CYMK no. um, or CMYK uh, printing process but as as the sheets are running through the press the ink densities are changing um, and so you can get these colour shifts. So mm. it's really important that the press is managed well so that yeah. every book doesn't come out completely different from the next. And you get some of the colours because CMYK is quite limited in there they're four colours, um, yeah. and sometimes with certain colours that you might, it, it might not be exactly, but it'd be pretty close to a print that's coming out of a, I call them hybrid printers because they've got IG, RGB and CMYK in to create this, and also violets and all these other colours. Mm -hmm. So they produce a much wider colour gamut 
than yeah. CMYK does. Absolutely. Um, so you have to work really hard on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you just need to, I mean, it's a bit like color management mm. generally. I mean, you can produce colors in Adobe RGB, even though mm. you can't print on a, on a pigment yeah. printer. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a, a more yeah, subtle yeah. difference. Um, but sometimes you have to choose between hue accuracy mm. or between saturation accuracy, which for this image that we're going to discuss is maybe, uh, you know, that's a, a yeah. good one to choose. But you can certainly get an incredibly accurate result. And really, it's only blues that, that are a bit mm. more, require a bit more yeah. thought. Yeah. And I should say also, um, one bit that everyone overlooks, everyone says about the, uh, the print quality and also the color and things, but it's also the alignment. <laughs> of yeah, these pictures yeah, here because yeah. I have seen some well, that's iffy need, results yeah that's where you that's need good where, binders I mean unfortunately yeah. when you're producing uh, you know a thousand plus books there's lots of things that can go wrong and the binding process is, is yeah. just as important because if you've got a, a book that's cracking open easily or that where you've got misaligned uh, pages that, that really oh, is not misalignment good. Is, you know, <laughs> I mean in awesome. theory the error could be three millimeters here which would be really noticeable mm. but unfortunately it's kept much tighter than that yeah did you design the layout as well, or did, did you have yeah. help? Um, well, yeah, the, so the layout I, I did um, more or less on my own. Um, I took a bits of advice mm -hmm. here and there I wasn't sure on a, a spread. So uh, Sandra Bartoko is a yep. German photographer. She's brilliant with books. So I ran a couple of things past her. Um, I also had Joe's help, Joe Cornish's mm -hmm. help with some of the image sequencing. He made some uh, pretty good suggestions, mm. I think, as you might expect. It's always having... That other set of eyes, I think, when you're doing yeah. it and just thinking. So I, I love this layout with the like the, the portrait and the yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting because because this this particular layout, you you've got a real color contrast mm. here. So maybe the subject matter mm. ties these two together, yeah, but yeah. then there's almost an awkwardness mm. to the to the contrast. So you don't maybe want to do that too much in the book. So more often, I'm pairing on color themes. So yeah. I might have two images shot on the same uh, evening, even uh, you know, yeah. opposite each other. And it's, I always call it like ghosting images. So you can, you've got a spread here with the nice blues and then you are going into those. So it almost, you've got these echoes still coming in. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's why this one kind of works really nicely. Um, I love this image as well with the tree and things. I just, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was actually a morning where um, I didn't think I was going to get much because these cloud inversions, of course, they're amazing mm. to be on. A, it's amazing to be on a mountain above the clouds, but sometimes the mountains are just appearing as islands and it's very hard to form compositions. Mm. So I was actually wandering around that morning thinking, God, I've got to make something of this. And I spotted that tree yeah. and it was just a matter of waiting for the clouds to do the oh, right just, thing. It just yeah. makes everything. You, you just get the scale of it Yeah. when this, with that there. Um, yeah, one of the few trees in the Fisherfield <laughs> Forest, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, it's these, for anyone who hasn't watched the channel before and thinks I'm useless at landscape photography, it's, it's, it's a joke everywhere, so don't worry. But I'm always in awe of landscape photographers and how, oh, mountain photographers, should I say, but um, how you get these shots. I know you trek for miles and miles <laughs> in some cases to... Yeah, sometimes it feels like a bit of a war of attrition, to be honest. I mean, particularly <laughs> if you get into a run of, of bad trips, which inevitably happens on a long mm. project like this, that you might have several weeks of trips where it just doesn't work out, even a whole year's yeah. work. Um, yeah, definitely. So you have to have to keep working at it for sure. Yeah. And you've got little stories in here as well, or a uh, a thread going through. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a, a Not... big appeal of mountain photography mm. for me is is the adventure and time mm. experience to the photographs. So actually, I have a lot of my own prints on my walls at home, which is fairly unusual mm. for a lot of photographers anyway who like to hang, hang at other people's work. But it's because they link to this experience for mm. me, and I, I wanted yeah. to share that in this book. So yeah, there's a few adventure stories in there. And I think that's, I know that Paul Sanders and people talk a lot about that, that emotional experience that you kind of in two camps almost it's the print is the final image is everything or it's the actual experience along with the final images which conjures up those emotions in the mm. background and of where you went to and yeah oh, that was a hard day kind of thing but actually we got this shot here which was yeah made it all worthwhile i suppose one of the really interesting aspects about that is of course every photo in here i experienced and so mm. i know what was around me and what was happening on yeah. that day and what it felt like and all those things which gives me a richer experience but then i also can't divorce myself from that experience no. so other people opening the book will 
have no sense of yeah. what was going on behind me or what I felt like, or, or which actually is, is a really interesting quality of photography generally, that it can paint these pictures of worlds that effectively don't exist, right? I mean, you yeah, have yeah, yeah. more or less no idea of what this landscape no. is, is like, aside from what I'm showing. You've probably got a massive tourist group over here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere. That's right. but, yeah. but yeah, there is, and you have no control over that as a photographer. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to get ph philosophical on this, Ronan Barthes has a lovely book and a lovely essay called The Death of the Author, which talks all about this. We won't go in it to, into it today, but basically it's about how you can't control and you're, as soon as you put a picture out there, be it online or book or anything, you're basically redundant at that yeah. point. Yeah, Indeed. yeah, it's It true. becomes, but yeah. So you better make sure the book's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we won't get into too much of that today, yeah. but yeah. But no, it's, it's, oh, it's just stunning. It's, um, I can see there's, um, one thing I have said, it's kind of, you've got quite strong like, colour themes. That'd be fair to say. Within yeah, that. I mean, I, I think the conditions I shoot in, um, I'm, I'm quite selective about. Mm. Um, but there's certainly some some themes when, when you go through the book, um, because I try to tie seasons together or weather conditions together. Um, and so, I mean, the, the spread mm. you've just gone through here, we've got overcast conditions yeah. and I want to keep them feeling moody and sort of authentic to that sort of mm. oppressive, almost Scottish You've experience. got this lovely, like, blue cyan in the sky up here yeah, it so seems to I actually like to keep my uh, cloudy skies on the bluer side mm. so I, I do find that when you've got sort of warm cloudy skies they can look muddy pretty quickly yeah. um so I get yeah, that, yeah sometimes introduce a tiny bit of blue uh, yeah. into cloudy skies and there's even if it's very gray like well this one here but there's not it's still got that hint of blue in there hasn't it yeah yeah I try try to keep it looking uh yeah a bit a uh, bit moodier and and fresher Ooh. that that blue definitely it feels fresher and colder to me that way i'm working through quickly because i want to get to the print we want to talk about and um so we almost there uh, these lovely waters as well you can you Young. can skip huge sections don't <laughs> yeah. we'll be here a oh, while oh i just want to uh, <laughs> we'll do a we'll do a big run through of it but um yeah it's it's beautiful how it's laid out Thank things you. um but this is the one we want to talk about yeah. isn't it here yeah. so um and this is the print we have here on the table as well. That's right. So you can see some uh, some slight differences here. So we've got a print on platinum cotton, yeah. which is your chosen paper by us here at Photo Speed. But there are some differences, and and one of those differences is we've got a CYMK uh, mm. print here, CMYK. I always say that the wrong way around, <laughs> um, and and an RGB print here, um, and. With these modern printers, you can print incredibly yeah. saturated ultramarine blues if you want to. Um, but the only way to achieve that with color offset is by combining magenta and cyan. And yeah. that is not as blue as a pure blue pigment that you can get no. from, uh, from one of these printers. Um, so this is actually the biggest difference that we see in the book, more or less, um, between what I can print at home. I've got a Pro 1000 at home, and, and as you say, a print on this uh, platinum cotton, which is an amazing paper. Uh, but this is maybe the biggest difference you mm. can ever see. But I wanted to talk about this image because uh, it's maybe the sort of uh, the most extreme example mm. of, of my approach as a photographer getting out to what is the most remote Monroe, that's a mountain above 3,000 feet in Scotland, and, and doing it in the snow. So mm. I actually had this dream 10 years ago now of could I get up this mountain in really difficult conditions I mean it's just physically harder getting up yeah. places in the snow yeah um, I mean, and of course you have to camp out um, because this is I mean 17 kilometers more or less as the, the bird flies from um, Pool U which is out on the coast in this image so yeah it was uh, it was an emotional moment actually when I got up here and, and took some of these photos because I felt like this was this huge mm. achievement and um, that yeah that trek. I, that's right yeah <laughs> so did you camp out up here as well yeah so um, here, so. actually down uh, between the two two locks mm. that, you, that you see here just just out of sight actually touched okay. around this hill but uh, yeah it's a pretty long hike even when you've yeah. walked most of the distance uh, by that point so yeah we actually arrived at one o'clock in the in the morning the night before set up camp, had a quick sleep, and then got out hiking the following day. So by the time I'd returned to the tent, I'd walked 36 kilometers in the snow in uh, less than 24 hours. So uh, it was just as well I was fit at that point. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, yeah, um, yeah certainly, uh, you just need to sell more prints so you can get helicoptered in, take the shot, that's and right. there you go. That's, yes. that's the dream, I'm joking, but I think it would probably take something away from it the adventure. Yeah, it. definitely, yeah. because there's extra something in 
these shots, I, I think, that we haven't seen the comparison, if you did. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there's something that it's your journey as well. With yeah, I mean, that, I, I, it all adds absolutely. to the photography. I mean, I, I couldn't do it any other other way. But exactly. it's just it's it's the way that mm. I relate to the landscape, and uh, yeah, it's the way I enjoy my photography. Yeah, and you have this because you've walked through it. You've got that different. You, you just have a different point of view. I, I think. So yeah, going, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's that. Yeah. Pu- that there's the shot everyone would take, but you've walked through it and thought, actually, if I just turn a little bit this way, that looks beautiful. Yeah, and it's, it's also you're just spending a lot of time outdoors. And of course, yeah. the more time you spend outdoors, the more you see, um, uh, the more you understand the landscape. So um, uh, some of these images were, were planned. I mean, certainly even the first time I went up Evasion, I knew that I would get this view mm. out to the West because I'd seen other hikers' photos. But there's a lot that you only see for the first time when you're yeah. hiking these routes. Definitely. Um, so there's certainly a, a degree of opportunism to some of these photos as much as those images like this that are more planned. And I love this. We've got this lovely bit of magenta coming through as well. So that's obviously yeah. the light coming through. The very, very last um, moment of sunlight. In fact, this was the composition that I was most mm. excited about when, when I uh, came up here because we have this lovely sweep of, of snow to the bottom left there. And obviously the classic view out, out to sea, which is just yeah. inherently epic, yeah, in it, especially yeah. in, in the snow. Um, but I wanted that softness of light, particularly because actually this right-hand side would have been too strong with the full mm. strength of the sun, making it sort of bright pink colour. Um, but it's actually kind of interesting yes. looking at that colour because yeah, let's look we at did the... have a disaster print here. Didn't we? <laughs> we did. Um, so, I mean, th- this is kind of interesting to talk so, about because, in fact, when I first started printing on, on my Pro 1000, um, I wasn't happy with the colour. Mm. And I was using the photo speed generic profiles and they were just ever so slightly off. And I remember writing down on one of my uh, test prints all of the tiny errors so one of them i remember was that oranges were looking slightly yellow mm. and i listed down all these things and i rang you up actually yeah, yeah, this yeah. all these so years we, ago we and you said, many oh, conversations we just, yeah. <laughs> well we just need to make a, a custom profile for mm. you and, and i got that profile back and everything was perfect so i yeah. just fixed it overnight see now, no one believes me <laughs> no, no yeah so it, it, it is well worth doing yeah that. and and i i I've made one of those profiles now, or you have, I should mm. say, for every single one of the photo speed papers that I've been using. But platinum cotton is, is certainly my, my favourite mm. paper to use. But it's slightly warmer paper, is that? Yeah, it's which for snow scenes seems like a particularly compliment. poor poor choice. Maybe. Well, I mean, it's not really, classically. I probably, I probably, if I hadn't seen any of your images, I would say normally go for a higher white point of paper. Yeah, yeah, because with snow scenes and things like that. However, you do have these accents of color and things like that yeah, and within maybe with this color Im- uh, image in particular mm. you've got you've got a richness to the blue that would dominate the paper anyway but yeah certainly i think um a lot of people when they're printing snow scenes like to have the whitest white they possibly mm. can um whereas for me i i want consistency when people might be hanging several of my images together i mean mm. certainly yeah. i do that um, and I've never found that slight warmth that you get from uh, natural cotton colours mm. in, in paper to be a problem at all. And of course, you don't have any of the very long term issues with OBAs fading and no. so on. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that consi- consistency. And I've certainly always been happy printing these uh, lighter and bluer images that people mm. might otherwise go onto a white paper on this. Yeah, image. and it just it just brings things up a little bit sometimes. It can really... Mm. It just warms it up a little bit. Like you said, the blue could get a little bit too much, perhaps. But it, yeah. it, it just lifts things very slightly as well. But yeah, I mean, the, the colour difference you see here is mm. from a far more disastrous yes. mistake, um, yeah. which, we, which we won't go into. But <laughs> it does at least um, <laughs> illustrate the importance well, of... Uh, we go to it a little bit. It was just to do with colour space and yeah. which one yeah, we had absolutely. selected. So always make sure you've um, got the correct colour space for the image going into yes, the printer. Adobe RGB, <laughs> it's generally the, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Adobe RGB, you can't really go wrong with that. I know there are some more coming out, but yeah, that's for a whole other day, that minefield. But yeah, they just look lovely printed. And even, I mean, I was gonna say even in the book, and they're not even in the book, because I know how hard Alex worked to get these colors right, and the printer as well. It's the yeah. importance of having a printer you can, well, trust, I suppose, Absolutely, and also, yeah 
is really experienced in printing. I mean, the, the fact is, um, you, you know, you can put as, as much work as you want mm. into finding the best printer um, and printing to the highest standard possible. But actually, uh, these desktop printers are unbelievably oh. good. Um, and so in some ways, it's an unfair comparison. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're never going to match a pigment print in, in a book as much as I've And you didn't fancy pretty, printing pretty them pretty all off and binding them yourself. <laughs> well, I, I have done a little <laughs> bit of that. Um, not, not so much the binding, but I've made my own print boxes. Yeah. And actually, that's how I did the image sequencing. And mm. what I should have done is brought in that huge box because I've I, I made a, a box of A4 prints and, and went through those with Joe Cornish mm. because I think having those prints physically and being able to shuffle them around yeah. is, is very important. So you're definitely a print on the table. Put yeah, them, put them on the wall. I know people look, stick yeah, them I mean, to You've got to have a first move. pass yeah. on the computer, but I think you need to have a sense of how big you want to print the yeah, images in comparison yeah. to one another. And, and also some of the color differences, they, mm. they only seem to really jump out at you when you've got the physical prints together. So when you're pairing images, that can actually be quite important yeah. to have the, have the prints. No, on definitely. The just the digital version. A very strong believer of that, of how things work together, because you always spot something in the print. It could be really obvious, like you haven't cleaned something out, or there's something blowing. I doubt you'll get yeah. any any rubbish blowing across up here, but I bet I'll be well, surprised yeah. sometimes. It's, um, it's amazing the kind of things you, mm. you miss in, in either format, actually. I mean, I think if you were to just look at prints, you might miss things that you see yeah. on screen and vice versa. So you do have to keep, keep an eye out for these uh, little flaws. I love these, can. actually. I haven't seen this page before, um, where we you've actually swapped the, the blue and the warm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's sort of, I mean, obviously that's just the way it was, but I mean, it is nice to have that the other way around. Mm. I've not actually thought of that myself. But is that conscious? It isn't, no. I wish I should say that it, it's conscious. Well, there's two ways, isn't it? It's just instinct, and that's yeah. what um, great photographers do. Um, well, or so is it, yeah, or you think, oh, well, is it, is it made images? But no, I think, I'm, I'm more instinct. So I think yeah, I mean, obviously I'm in a pretty amazing place here in amazing <laughs> conditions, and I look for everything that I think will make for a, a strong image. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, there's certainly some intent. Um, when it comes to the pairing, sometimes I'm going out looking for an image that will pair with another, and then it gets really... Um, specific mm. what, what you can be looking for but um, it yeah, sometimes, sometimes does influence your photography possibly if you're looking f you've already kind of gone through and started to sequence a little bit oh, absolutely it can influence yeah. and I'm torn on that if it's a good thing or a bad thing in some cases I think it is a good thing because you get to finish the book mm -hmm. <laughs> and it quickly makes you finish the book if you've got yeah. deadlines coming mm -hmm. up quite often you're pairing images with this idea of similarity you know tying mm. them together but you can actually go too far down that yeah line and then and you need that trite you need that refresher or yeah palette cleanser i call it yeah it? well it's thank you very much absolutely stunning um and everything put together and the maps and every all the detail in the book is fantastic now if you want a copy of this, they can get it on your website. Yeah, my, my website only for the time being. Okay. It'll probably be up in a in a few shops up in the northwest in in due course. But uh, yeah, just just my website. It's it's forty nine pounds, but it's uh, a very expensive book to produce. I have to say. So there's uh, plenty of things I spent extra money on, not least uh, the, yeah. the cover. Design I was going to say the cover the, alone is yeah. <laughs> stunning, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but we will do some close ups as well. But we've got embossed. The mountains yeah. here on the So you can basically pay double. Uh, if you want to foil and de okay. the graphic, then you just pay double. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, the, the book cloth as well is, is a very high-end book cloth because I didn't want something that would pick up scratches mm. easily. And and for me, the, the beauty of the book is is not or a book, not the book. Um, it is not just the, the ability to show somebody a, a collection of work, which of course is great, but it's also in, in the book itself as an mm. item. Yeah. Um, so I think that packaging side is, is very important. You want it to be a yeah. nice thing. Now, you can get this on Alex's website, which is alexnail.com. Yeah, com. very easy. Well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. And Hopefully we can do more of these in, in the future. Yes, and I think it'd be great to talk a little bit more about your actual prints and how we do those as well. I said, thank you for watching. It's been an honour having Alex on with me today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel. Um, and as always, don't forget to go on photospeed.com to sign up to the Photospeed newsletter, which will keep you up to date with all the exciting things happening here at Photospeed. And also with our amazing ambassadors like Alex here as well. And also don't forget we release new videos every Thursday here on the Photospeed YouTube channel. 
So on that note, a happy new year and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>